ठीक है सो टू सॉल्व दिस यू कलेक्ट फ्रॉम द रेफरेंस द कोफिशिएंट्स ऑफ एक्स वाई जेड फॉर द फर्स्ट वन वी हैव 1 1 2 the coefficient of x y z for second x y z then you demarcate and get the right hand side and then you form that you form this now there's what you call the echelon form is what you call the echelon form the echelon form and also the reduced echelon form now when we say the echelon form we mean you ensure that in these positions you ensure that there's a one here there's a one here and there's a one here so the major diagonal has ones and for the echelon form you keep one side for you to have ones here say so must that one of this side either this one or the upper one in fact the down one these will be zeros this or has to get one there one here and one there and then the reduced one after you have zeros here you have ones here then you also make sure this this and this are also zeros that one gives us that so should be was if this is 0 0 0 0 0 then x is equal to this number that will be here y is equal to the number that will be here z is equal to the number that will be here so we do that uh in a systematic way so let's see how we do that so we first want to make it in echelon form so to make it in echelon form you start always you start with, you fix the equation 1 you check how it is you fix it so you say row 2 you subtract from row 2 subtract 2 row 1 since we have a 1 in the first position there the first entry there is 1 so you got the second row and say row 1 minus 2 i mean row 2 minus 2 row 1 so that you force you force a zero here okay then also row 3 minus 3 row 1 we are using these numbers this 3 and that 2 we want zeros there now because we have used row 1 to reduce this other 2 we don't need to touch row 1 at that point so what we we'll get is 1 row 1 is fixed remember 1 1 2 Four. Then row two minus two row one two minus two it will be zero. Then three minus two it will be one. And then six minus four it will be two. Then ten minus eight it will be two. So I'm applying each entry of row 1 by 2 before it's subtract from the entry of row 2 over 3 the same 3 minus 3 that's 0 6 minus 3 that's 3 10 minus 6 that's 4 and 17 minus 12 that's 5 So at this point now we have a one here we have a one here so we need a zero here 
So to form a zero here, we would say, okay, so row three minus three row two. So we we'll get there we we'll get one, one, two, four, zero, one, two, two. This will be zero because zero minus three by zero is two zero. Then three minus three, we get zero. Then four minus six, we get minus two. And then five minus six, we get minus one. Then from that, so I first want to make it an acron. First to take it in the atron form, and then we'll take it reduced. Then we'll be done with our survey. So to atron form, we'll say row three, divided by or three multiplied by neg one over two or three. Okay, so it's like I've repeated. So I'll just write it in this one. Neg one over two or three. So we get one, one, two, four, Zero, one, two, two, zero, zero, one, one over two. Like that. Then what next? So you've seen it's now in the H run form. And so far, so good. We know the value of Z. That simple. So far, Z, if you want, you can give a value of Z. Z is equal to one over two. Because if you, this zero X, zero Y plus Z is equal to half. So Z is equal to half. This means that if we make this, if we take this in the reduced uh, H1 form, we will direct away get the value of X and Y. Or if you want from here, we would say then y plus 2z is equal to 2, meaning that y plus 2 by half is 2. <coughs> that is y is 2 minus 1, which is 1. So y is 1. We can get x because now we have x plus y plus 2z is 4. This is x plus 1 plus 2 by half is 4. That is x plus 1 plus 1 is 4. So x is 4 minus 2, which is 2. So I found the values of x, y, and z. But if we wanted, we would have reduced this. We we'll say, OK. Let's go to row one and subtract row two. And then okay, there that's one. So let's say so one to fix a zero there. So that will give us. Mm, one, one minus one, zero, two minus two, zero, and then four minus two, two, and then zero, one, zero, one, two, two, and zero, zero, one, Half. Then the last thing now will be going to row two and say 
row two minus two row three. This will be one zero zero two and then zero one two minus two that will be zero two minus one that will be one and then zero zero one half so in this form you you see that now when you say x is two y is one z is half so i'll just say so it's even nice no solving further you just get them as they are so you've seen the way that is involved if you leave it in h on form you have the way to solve the equation if you leave it in reduced h on form you just pick the values of x y and z in that order So nice. So the solving should shouldn't be hard. Should be the easiest thing, yeah. yeah. How is it? So right. Okay. So you, which one should I give you to submit? The longer one. Mm. Now you submit question B. You should use, you should use this method. And let me see. So did you fail to have one, one, one because of the order there? And also the solution because of the order, you can't have unique solution. So you submit B and C. So C is in the non form <coughs> where you have x minus 2y is equal to 5, 2x plus 3y is equal to 3. That one you use simultaneous. It's not in the matrix because it don't make sense there. Let's use simultaneous equations. You pick two of them, then you know, well, whatever you find, those values will satisfy the other one. I want us to look at the properties of this very thing on question two. Question two is saying, let's get to, let's get to question two. Question two is saying, in each of the following systems, Determine one, the values of A such that the system has a unique solution. Here, find the value of A such that this guy has a unique solution. Two, the pairs of values of A, B, so that the system has more than one solution. So you find the pair A, B, so that the system has more than one solution. Why the value of, so you state the reason why the value of B, does not have an effect on where the system has a unique solution. <clears throat> okay, so do this now. So that you can appreciate why the so that you can appreciate why. 
I mean, some of these properties here. Okay, so how do we go there? Look at this, the final thing. Look at this final thing. If, if this was two, If this was two, I mean, okay, if this was, um, what number can I? Okay, I think it would be nice, nice to explain on that same question. So let's do it. Okay, so we'll do question two A. X minus two Y is equal to one. X minus Y plus A Z is equal to two. A Y plus nine Z is equal to B. <clears throat> so what will happen? We form a matrix. One, negative two, zero, and then one. Then one, negative one, A, and then two. And then zero, A, nine, then B. So it's here. First thing we reduce in the normal way. So we are saying row two minus row one direct. This will give us one, make two, zero, one. Then two, one minus one will get zero. Negative two, minus, I mean negative one, this negative one here, minus, minus two, it will give us positive one. Then A minus zero, we get A. Then two minus one, we get one. Then zero, A, nine, B. Then here, we want to say, we want a zero here. So we say row three minus A row So when we do that, what are we getting? First we have one, make two, zero, one. Then we have zero, one, A, one. Then we have zero, zero here is a must. But nine minus a squared. So here we have nine minus a squared, and then b minus a. Because we are multiplying row two by a. So we get that. Then now, what we are having now is that we're now going to the question. When does the question have a unique solution? When does it have a unique solution? When you make sure that this guy here is not zero. 
So unique solution. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Where are you getting the A squared? We are subtracting R3 minus A R2, I mean not R1, minus A R2. You can now see where the A is coming from, where the A is coming from. Yes, yes. Okay, good. So now we'll say unique solution if nine minus a squared is not equal to zero. But this is not allowed to be that. So the square root, the square root a should not be equal to plus or minus three. So if you don't allow a to be plus or minus three, because this this way now I was talking about that exam. The first one. If if this if this was zero here, would have been saying zero plus zero plus zero is equal to half. But that's not true. So that would have meant that there, there are no solutions. So to avoid such a scenario, you come here and say this must not be zero. And if this guy is non zero, then it's a must that we have a unique solution because we can make that one zero. We can make a zero there and a zero here. The solutions will come out like they came out here where we're saying x is two, y is one, z is half. That's what you mean by unique. Then, so that is for unique solutions. Then for for no solution, we just mentioned it here. That so no solution if if nine minus a squared is equal to zero. When b minus a is not zero. Remember, there we must make sure that now we can talk about the b minus a part. So we are saying if nine is equal to plus or minus three, and b is not equal to a, then we have no solution. Because it will mean that if this guy is allowed to be zero, then you have zero plus zero plus zero, giving us non-zero. Since you are saying this is not zero, which is not possible. Zero plus zero plus zero can only give us a zero. Then, then, uh, multiple more than one. More than one solution. If if nine minus a squared is allowed to be zero at a time when b minus a is equal to zero. Meaning if a is plus or minus three and the b is equal to a, then we'll have some in solution. Because this whole line here will be zero. So what it will mean is this. Suppose in this case, we'll have one minus two, zero, one, 
1, 0, 1, A. The reasons will be 0, 0, 0, 0. Not affecting anything. So because you have two equations and three unknowns, we will say this one here, y is equal to negative, I mean, is equal to one minus a z. Meaning that y depends on z. So x will be one plus two uh, y. But we know what y is, y is z. So this is one plus two one minus a z, which is one plus two minus two a z, which is three minus two a z. So this is x. So now I'm saying x is three minus two a z, y is one minus a z, meaning that any value of z that you get to give you so many values. So you're going to have multiple, more than one. So what does this tell us about the properties of, of these guys? We are seeing that if the electron form, or the reduced, if one row has zeros, then we have multiple solutions. Okay, if, if none of the rows are zeros, then we have unique solutions. But if there are zeros on the left and on the right, there's a non-zero, then we have no solution. That's what we learned from there. So that's the infinite. So this is, so on the big one, so far, that's what you must detect. So that I give you a task again. I want to see how you're going to reason on 2B and C. Remember, you also have one B and C. So you must state, so use this example you get there and then start getting the, everything is just on this last, last number here and this one. And then why do you think that B is not affecting anything? B here is affected. But B here is affected because you are saying B must not be called A. But in so many ways, we are interested in the left-hand side, that this guy here should not, this guy that determines the number of solutions that we have. The last row. So the left-hand side matters a lot as compared to the right-hand side in terms of the last row. Okay. So, Not much detail today. So I'll, 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 I'll be waiting for 1 BC and 2 BC. And then let me check when is the, when is, So when is uh, to on Wednesday? Like on Wednesday. That's why now I'm going to look at a bit. This one is a bit crucial. It's a bit critical. I mean, not crucial. It's very important. The linear combinations. If we will understand that one, it means that we are done with this because it was now we can answer any question. So for now, I wait for you so that we end the class here.